Okay, people, so now it's June 15, 2019. We're in the X Club, aka slash painting room greenhouse. Alright. It's always the X Club, though, people. Don't forget, we got all those little microscopes and everything and stuff like that in there. Whole bunch of children's craft stuff up in those things up in there. There's a couple of bins up there. You can see drums. Maybe I'll pull out the drums. Let the kids bang on them. Hornets like to make their nests in here, so I'm always kicking out hornets. But besides that point, uh, that was a hornet. So as you can see what's going on, right? There's quite a few of them in here. I don't know what I'm going to be doing with them all. This here I need to transplant. There's two of them in there and they're wanting to go this way. Follow the sun and go this way. Right? This, uh, this here, when you go back into my videos, I'm going to do this today, people. When you go back into my videos, you'll see that somebody had gave me red grapes. And boy, oh boy, were they ever good, people. And I uh, juiced them. And I made juice for Amari. Anyway, these are the seeds from them. The thing about grape seeds is, you put in a red seed grape and you might get green grapes. You just never know. But I want to show you my green grapes later on. Hold on a minute. Okay, people. There's Mickey the gardener cat. She was stalking me on the inside. She knew I was coming out. Anyway, so here's what's happening. It is, what, July 18th, 2019. It's 11.30 in the morning, people. I will be out here probably to about 9.30, 10 o'clock tonight. All day. This is the mission. <laughs> it has to get done. As you can see, I weeded it and all the weeds came back. The morning glory is growing. Besides that point, I'm getting into that hole. Pull out the weeds quickly as best as I can. I'm digging that hole deeper. Taking out the dirt, putting it wherever, use it for other things. And I'm going to start emptying these buckets of sand into the center of this hole. So I can get on with this pond. But I have to move the hay and the alfalfa and the timothy hay and all this other stuff that we got for the rabbit. The bin's over there, so i got to make a path so we can move these bins. I need to get up in here. This is my shed. But I have a sneaky feeling that just maybe, maybe, Matilda's in there with her babies. I have had raccoons in there once before, and they took it over for three months. On this side of the, this in here, is all wood to make musical instruments and crafts with that I got from the field from the walnuts, right? And they're still sitting here. Obviously, I haven't had time to do that with Andre. And then on the other side is other stuff now, whether this raccoon is in here or not, because if the raccoon is in there, then uh, what's happening is uh, I'm not going to be able to do anything with that until she vacates, which probably won't be for a while yet. <laughs> so, anyway, this is what I'm doing today, people. Hold on. Okay, people, I thought this was kind of funny. I've dug myself into a hole here. <laughs> Serious. I'm in the... I'm in this hole that needs to be four feet down deep at least in this pond so that when the predators in the neighborhood come by try and scoop up Mickey just walking right on by the camera <laughs> uh, scoop up on fish that I'd like to put in here they can go down to the bottom and hopefully not get caught and eaten so what I'm going to do again is pick weeds I have to pick around here first. How many times have I done this this year? Like, this is going on to my third time already. That's what I mean. I kind of dug myself into a hole here. I'll pan it. I, I feel like I'm like a kid. I do. Playing in the yard. Building myself a... I don't know. I can't say it's a moat. <laughs> right? Building myself something here. I just want to show you. Do you see? Like literally, I'm in the hole, people. Here's the hole. Right? Yeah. 
I'm in the center of this pond. I have to go down at least another two feet. Oh my god. Now I'm gonna get rid of all these weeds. That's a herb. That's organo. Those little purple ones. I got I have a, a main organo plant over there that just like I said last year I didn't get down to cut down my seeds or anything. So all my, you know, foliage that died off come fall and just seeds everywhere. Hold on a minute. Okay, so so I'm out of the hole now. This is how things work around here. I start over there, people. That's where I was. It was down up in that little hole. Looking. Now I'm over here because I've got all these weeds coming. Anyway, I'm going to get up into this. Uh, what is it called? Compost. This is wood that Andre and I and his mother, Sierra, helped to carry this. I'm not going to take all the credit. Brought home to do crafts with. These are like cherry, maple, all the trees that they cut down over there. And, uh, what do you call it? This is primo stuff. But the wood itself is to do musical instruments or crafts or, you know, those craft rounds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these out, put, put them someplace else, and I'm going to try and protect them from the rain. Probably take out some of the dirt that's in there because it's going to be primo dirt in terms of primo dirt. So that's going to, I don't know how long it's going to take me, people. And then as I'm weeding out all that, all those weeds and everything can go in there. And as you do that, every now and then you throw in food scraps and you can give, go buy some cheap seaweed and throw in seaweed and give it some cardboard and some eggshells and a few bones. And then over a period of a couple, two, three years, you get primo dirt. This is uh, right here. It's probably primo dirt in here too, people. I have to be careful because this mother raccoon is in the yard. Uh, when that cop showed up because my landlady made a mistake on her phone, I haven't seen Matilda since. So I don't know where Matilda is, but being that she was in my yard and she wasn't straying too far, she may have, I'm thinking she might have her babies in here. <laughs> so I, before I scare the shit out of her, Now I'm in the compost. This one here needs fresh. Oops, sorry. No, it's not not there yet. Oh, there, there's some. But I'm not interested in getting into that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get in here with a pitchfork, turn everything around, throw in some new weeds, throw in some food scraps, and cover it back up. So I got to clear this out, get it ready, work on that. And as I do that, I'm clearing out this kind of stuff taking it to the back because I'm still building I have to reinforce this rabbit hutch just give it a few more beams but that's another day when I bring out the skill saw which is not today you know chop down this now this is this is uh, what is it called comfrey comfrey is very good for compost and tomatoes like to grow in compost that had comfrey in it just remember that and not only that but when these things first start growing you pinch off the leaves and you use it as a healing property with salves that you can put on the skin. Not necessarily drink it as a tea, although some people do, but because it's toxic in, you know, in high doses, you have to be very careful. So this plant is a very valuable plant. And then trim back this, because I don't know what happened to it. It fell over, it got too big, because I never prune, right? We didn't get plums this year. What I should have done, and in my travels, maybe I'll look. Sometimes, you know, things come to me if I need it. So in this case, what I would need is, and I did one time came across it, and I should have bought it when I did, but seen it and I didn't, is it's big burlap. Because if I would have covered this in February with burlap and protected it from the cold weather that we had from February until June, basically, once we got past that last frost, this thing would be full of plums right now. But because I didn't cover it, all the buds died off. Same thing with the pear tree. Hold up. Okay, people. Now, this is just too fucking funny, man. Like, how the hell did I get in this corner? Do you see where I am? This is what I'm doing now. <laughs> I can't take out this wood until I peel off this bark. Because otherwise, I'm going to get this bark all over, you know, as I'm taking it out. And that, then I'd have to clean that up. So why clean twice, right? 
and these things have been sitting here oh my god I don't know like mm, this was before they tore down the trees because they had started cutting trees there long before they tore down that last 100 set of you know trees they cut down tens 20 trees before they even cut down the hundred so you have to remember this was all farmland out here that's why with that cowbell that cowbell came from out here so that cowbell that I had with that live yesterday is probably over a hundred years old that's why it's made out of copper right so before I can throw anything into this compost or get into that primo dirt, take out the primo dirt because I'm transplanting walnut trees when I have time, right? I have to empty this out first and I still want to use this wood with Andre for crafts, or whatever those crafts may be. I wanted to make some musical instruments with him, but just, I have a lot of responsibilities, people. And then I end up in corners like this because, you know, sometimes, uh, what do you call it, when my kids get frustrated with life, you know, they, uh, well, you don't do anything, Mom. Right? You, you, well, you don't need to work in the yard, Mom. You, we know it's the landlord's responsibility. Not so much like it used to be. Because you have to remember, I've spent a lot of time in this yard, people. More than I ever expected to. But, you know, it has its rewards. Andre gets that freedom of this yard. Amari will benefit from the vegetables that I grow and the fruit that I grow in this yard. Right. And the animals benefit the ones that come around. Look at that. That is nice. And it, it smells good too. It didn't really get rained on, right? It's, it's cured itself quite nicely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let them dry out and then I'm going to hide them somewhere else in the yard where they're not going to get wet. Because obviously I'm not going to have no time to do anything with them, right? Only in my head, in my superwoman people, right? But that doesn't mean that maybe next year Uncle Marcane might not want to do something with them. Because, you know, he's a tree cutter and, you know, he comes home with wood and he's got things he wants to do. And, you know, I asked him to, I asked him, I said, do you cut down cherry trees? Do you ever cut down cherry trees? He said, yes. So I said, okay, well, bring me some wood. I want cherry tree wood. I think this is what this one is. Hey, Mom. Sorry, I left your videotaping. Um, is there any more of that relish you made? Relish I made. Ooh. The, re the <laughs> It's there in the fridge. Are you sure? No, are you? There's no more. Well, downstairs in the kit. Okay, you know when you're facing the fridge? Yeah. That little cubby that I used to keep locked up? Yeah. In there, there was a whole bunch of preserves. There would be some in there. So it's a be a new jar. Be what? A new jar. A new jar, yeah. Yeah. So there you go. When did I make that relish? Two years ago, with zucchini. Right. I think I did a little batch last year. I don't know. I think two years in a row. Anyway, she likes it. Right. So that's good. That's very good. So that's another reason to stay. Not only did I grow that relish, but I canned it and I had enough space to put it somewhere that two years later, she's pulling out a jar. So she's only 21. So in a few years from now, she'll be wanting to make that for herself. That's when she'll show an interest in canning. Right. So this could very well be either a maple tree or it could be, uh, what is it called, cherry. Because like I said, they had cut down quite a few trees before they came in there and cut down the rest of them, which was equal to more than 100 trees within a week. The first batch was maybe 10 or 20 trees. I can go back into my videos and 
I can show you at some point. I'm pretty sure I was running around out there with the trees before they were cut. So that's a nice piece of wood. I'm going to do now for the next primo compost and if you let it sit out look how easy it comes off it just rolled off okay. that's what that shed on that one half is just full of wood people from over there but maybe Matilda Matilda's living in there See, this one didn't get rained on as much, so this one here is oh, it's coming off. Okay, so anyway, I'm in this corner now, so I'll be back. This one, hot and sweet. Hot and sweet, that will work. Tasty to me. What is it with that cat, people? I'm still up in the compost pile here. Do you see that? That in there? That's black gold. For a dying planet, that dirt in there is black gold. But Mickey has planted herself right there, and she won't move. So I'm almost got it emptied out now, and I've changed plans. I've decided to keep this, so after I'm just going to give it a quick rinse, and then I'm going to let it air dry in the sun, and then I'm going to bag it, and I'm going to use it for crafts. Pictures and stuff, right? This is what I've done, you can see. This is, I'm pretty sure this is cherry wood. I don't know my wood's very good, but that's got to be cherry wood because of the color. Right? But look at that. That looks kind of like cool, people. Obviously, it was diseased, right? These are noids or something. They're called something, but anyway. Uh, I like this one. This wood would make a good, uh, what do you call it? You know, you sand it down and whatever, and then you shellac it. And it would be good for little birds in a in a um, bird cage or an aviary or something like that. So anyway, let me back. Okay, look what I just found. That is a walnut tree, people. That is a walnut tree. Huh. Is it English or black? Sometimes it's hard to tell when they're juvenile. Anyway, I have to get it out of here. So I'm going to have to gently move this out. Ah, I really should move this out and dig it out and put it in a pot. Hopefully it will survive. Little sneaky bugger. There's Mickey. So now what I'm going to do... Get out of here, Mickey. No, no, no. Shoot. Mickey, go away. Why are you bugging me? I don't know. Oh, it smells so good. It smells like forest. That's what it smells like. Oh. So now, I'm going to dig some of this out. And uh, get it ready for that baby that I'm going to try and dig out and transplant. And then once it's emptied, then throw in more stuff as I'm weeding out that over there. Yeah, and start all over again. This, I'll rinse off quickly, and then uh, just sit under the hot sun, dry it, and then bag it, and then when it comes time to work on Wal Andre's walnut art, we have extra material. My landlady, oh, she gets all nervous, right? <laughs> Worried, you know, with the CD, right? And like I tell her, like, you know, this makes dirt. No, not that. I have other wood like that around the yard that are making dirt. These I brought home specifically. Look how beautiful that wood is. Do you see, people? That's amazing wood. I'm pretty sure that's a cherry tree. And I'm going to keep the bark instead of composting because I've got other wood around the yard that I can throw in here for this purpose because that's how you get that stuff. So anyway, there's Mickey. But I just wanted to show you my little friend. Okay. I just got this phone call. From my uh, local MLA office, I'm just snapping up these twigs here from a tree so that uh, when I start filling it up, I don't have to do it then. 
it it composts better if you break it up into smaller pieces, right? Over a period of time. So I'm trying to get into this dirt, people. So anyway, Tisha fed me. So I'm burping now. And I just had a little lunch. And I'm out here till dark. Now, minus when I go to the bathroom. That's it. And oftentimes when I'm out here, I'll go hours without going to the I'll go all day without going to the bathroom. I mean, I kind of have to go soon, so anyway. So what I was saying is I got this phone call from my local MLA office, who I happen to know, Mr. Bruce Ralston. Mr. Ralston knows Uncle John. Uncle John and I had an appointment with Mr. Ralston back in the day when the BC Liberal government was in power. And, uh, they, uh, how did that work? This was before Andre was taken. And, anyway, I wanted to lobby the government for $160 million, people. I have it all written out. <laughs> I sent the letter twice to the Premier's office, and that was on, on, on the behalf of the Foundation, because we needed $160 million seed money in order to bring in a universal school meal program in the province of British Columbia, Canada. Right? If we didn't get that $160 million, you can kiss the community goodbye, because at the end of the day, the community feels like it's the government's responsibility that they uh, provide a meal program for students. And because it's so costly, it always goes down into that, oh, well, you know, we'll just feed the poor kids and not the kids that are above this income level, even though they could benefit from a universal school meal program, right? No car. So anyway, and... Uh, so I went to Mr. Ralston and I said, well, you know, I want you to take this to the government. I want you to lobby it for me, right? I want you to get that money. <laughs> so he sent me, he said, well, I can't do that because nobody's going to listen to me while I'm, in, you know, I'm sitting on the other side of the bench there, right, in terms of the parliament. You know, they were the opposition. They weren't the ruling party. And he said, nobody's going to listen to me. You, ne you need to take it to Mr. Hare, Dave Hare, right? So I did that. I made an appointment with Mr. Hare, explained the foundation to him, explained to him why we needed that $160 million, right? Told him to go get my money. Anyway, you know, he told me to go home and write some more, you know, dot some more I's and cross some more T's and put a little more information here and a little more information there, and that's exactly what I did. And then when I went back to go see him, he just blew me off. It was only for time, right? I mean, I know, I know what Mr. Ralston was telling me was true. At that time, they wouldn't have listened to him. So every now and then, before all this shit happened in my life, I'd run into Mr. Ralston. He's, you know, I'm, a, I'm his local constituent, right? I'm in his area. So every now and then, we pass paths in between going to the Sky Train or whatever. And then I ask him, you know, I say, "You're still going to help me, right, with this, you know, school meal program?" He goes, yeah, 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 when my, when my government is in Parliament. Well, people, his go government has been in Parliament now for, what, three years? Something like that? But with all this bullshit that goes in my life because of the employees to the government, right? When I say it's not 89 politicians that are creating the problems that I have in regards to, you know, the medical kidnapping of Uncle John or the wrongful apprehension of, uh, you know, Andre, you know, how Sierra was treated, and then what happened to Shimei, what's going on with Amari, you know, and like, that is, has nothing to do with 89 politicians. What it does, where it comes from, is it's related directly to an unmanaged, wild, public union sector that has this massive entitlement mentality to um, devour everything in its path just so that it can survive first. 
So of course they're going to pick the weakest of the weak who happen to be the old, you know, the children, the single mothers, you know, the individuals that are sick out on the streets because we have no one to defend ourselves and even when we try, we end up in corrupt court systems that are run by those same type of public union employees regardless of what the legislation says. They're not following the rules, and when they do, they use it to their advantage to harm and injure you even more than what they've already been doing. I don't really want to go and tell this to Mr. Ralston, because I know him. I've known him people since, like, fucking 2001, 2002. That's, I've known this man for, like, 18 years. Last time I seen him, he told me he was going to help me with the foundation. But how the fuck can I promote a foundation when my family is being torn apart? And I want to sue the government. A very government that he fucking runs now. Like, that's a conflict of interest. I can't take his ass to court and then come back to him tomorrow in his office and ask him to help me to fucking... Bring in a universal meal program into the province of British Columbia, Canada, because that's what he said he would do when he came into Parliament. So when this woman told, phoned me, I kind of didn't tell her the whole story, but I told her that I knew him and that he knows me and he knows all about the nonprofit. So, you know, if this two million dollars really does come in, that's what is going to spark people. It's not going to spark a park. Yeah, it's going to spark a park with ponies and roosters and stuff like that and a horse and, you know, programs for this and programs for that. But at the end of the day, what's going to come from that is a universal school meal program because you're talking big money now. Big money, big players.